Hello, I am Dr. Son Young Hui from Ijeon Dental Office. This is the third lecture on medications. We talked about antibiotics and NSAIDs. At this lecture, we are going to talk about other medications, and I'm going to talk about my prescription guide. I like a simple guide, so I'm going to talk about that. Other than antibiotics and the NSAIDs, what do we prescribe a lot? Antacids, gastrointestinal mucosal protective agents. So let's have a look at them briefly. This is what we prescribe most. Mosapride, mosapride citrate dehydrate. This is to treat digestive abnormalities and to stimulate GI movement. All of these are brand names and they are not exhaustive. These are widely used brands. These are used not because they treat or prevent GI problems better, but I should say they are the ones less reduced in terms of national health insurance reimbursement. Personally, I don't think these drugs can resolve the side effects of NSAIDs. However, these are widely used. That's why I'm introducing them. Next, Almagate. It is an antacid and also a gastrointestinal mucosal protective agent, neutralizing gastric acid. They are very safe drugs and they can be taken by patients with hypertension or heart disease due to drug interaction. As I said previously, it can interfere with the absorption of antibiotics like tetracycline. Therefore, you should not use that with tetracycline. And this is a very effective antacid. Next, aluminum hydroxide. This is antacid as well. This is metal salt. If used for a long time, constipation can be caused and they should not be administered to patients with renal disorder. Metal sodium inhibits the absorption of antibiotics like tetracycline. Ampozel is well known. Next, gastric acid secretion inhibitor. Aclatonium works pretty good. It inhibits gastric acid secretion and stimulates GI movement and it is widely used and this is a good choice. I've talked about digestives. There are separate drugs to prevent or reduce uh, the adverse reactions of digestives and NSAIDs, which will be in another lecture on drug adverse reactions. Skeletal muscle relaxants. We used to use the Chioko Chico seed quite a lot, but it is not used any longer, should not be used at all, not even on the market. Instead, baclofen can be used. It is used three times a day. Every three days, the dose can be increased by 5 mg at a time. It can start from 15 mg a day and be increased up to 80 mg a day, which is too much for a dental office to prescribe. The most widely used uh, skeletal muscle relaxants is Aparison. This is used 50 mg and 3 times a day, so I tend to use Aparison more than Baclofen. Next, this is sometimes prescribed by dentists after sinus surgery, antihistamine drugs. There are three generations of the drugs, generation 1, 2, and 3. The first generation is used most widely and very effective, generation 2, cetirizine, and generation 3, levocetirizine and others. Regarding antihistamine, we need to understand that as you go toward generation 3, 
It is less drowsy. It is the characteristics of antihistamine drugs that make you drowsy and mouth dry. As you go down the generations two or three, the symptoms would be reduced. So the effect is the greatest um, with the generation one. So that is ironical. So I believe it is good to use generation one drugs, but I don't really use antihistamine drugs, but it can be used when a patient has too much secretion. For that, it is used quite often. Some people say after sinus surgery, if you use antihistamine, sinus membrane would be dried, causing inflammation. So that is what they say. So if you are using it, you need to use it just for two to three days after surgery, and you need to stop it. Actipid is the most widely used antihistamine. It is pseudoephedrine plus a triprolidin. Pseudoephedrine is vasoconstrictor, and triprolidin is the antihistamine drug. So the antihistamine drug has vasoconstrictor and antihistamine. I believe Sudaped is better than this. Sudaped has only pseudoephedrine. Without antihistamine, triprolidine is the first generation antihistamine. The second antihistamine drug is Serotec, which is the same as Zyrtec. That's Cetirizine. Serotec, Zyrtec, Claritin, and Allegra can be taken once a day. Personally, I prefer to use Sudafed, but I try to avoid using antihistamine, but this is the information nice to know. Among antihistamine, I want to emphasize that Actipid is different from Sudafed. That is something you need to understand. Next, we use this anti tussives for sinus surgery, Mucopact and Rhinotheo. They have the same outcome, but their mechanisms are different. For example, Mucopact is Ambroxol, which is a surfactant. Sinus, for example, when mucus is generated, it facilitates discharge of the mucus. Facilitating the discharge is a good thing. Rhinotheol is lowering the viscosity of mucus. The outcome is the same, but mechanisms are different. I don't think there is any difference when you choose any of them, so you can choose either of them. Ambroxol and Rhinotheo, the carbocysteine, are different in terms of the actions of mechanism. Next, let me briefly talk about a drug therapy according to diseases. Sinusitis occurs very often after sinus surgery. A problem can occur. Sinusitis, you need to understand this. It requires a long-term use of antibiotics. So for sinusitis, you need to use the drug for at least 10 days and more than two weeks. If it is chronic, Antibiotics needs to be used for four weeks, and it's important to identify the bacteria. For the first week, antihistamine, mucopact, and these things can be given. After that, for week one to week three, antitherapy may be continued. That is the characteristics of sinusitis. Steroid is something not easy for us. In many occasions, I myself are not sure whether steroid should be given or not. Steroid is very effective, but the problem is the tapering. We are obsessed with the tapering. Steroid tapering is not that important when it is used for a short period of time, but tapering should be done in principle. So tapering is done like based on body weight. Maximum steroid is given for five days, followed by half the dose for another five days, and another half the dose 
for another five days. It is important to know the normal dose. Triamcillin, 8 to 60 mg a day. Prednisolone, 15 to 30 mg a day. Dexamethasone, 1.5 to 4.5 mg a day. The maximum dose is 2 to 3 times the normal dose. The doses differ depending on the drugs because of their short, intermediate, and long acting. You can just note dexamethasone's dose as it is widely used. Next, nerve injury. You just need to understand what that is. You need to act at the beginning, but basically you need to refer the patient to a specialist. It is reported that the use of NSAID before surgery would reduce the swelling after surgery. Thus, NSAIDs need to be administered with antibiotics. That would be a good option. For nerve injury, Generally, we use steroid, but it should be at the beginning only. When sensation is dulled or paralyzed, steroid must be given to reduce swelling. And next, vitamin B complex helps regeneration of nerve, but I don't think nerve would be regenerated with this only. Steroid would help to reduce swelling, and that is what we need to focus on. That's what we can do in a dental office. If we expect paresthesia, Neurontin should be prescribed. Gabapentin, and the brand name is Neurontin. High dose of Neurontin is used for anti-epileptics and low doses to control neurotic pain. So there are three doses. Side effects of Neurontin. It is in FDA category C. Very safe drug, but side effects include suicidal attempts and pancreatic cancer in men. And you should not drive while on the medication. So you need to keep that in mind. One thing good to know is the maintenance dosage of neuroagents like gabapentin or kabama. You should not start with the dose to reach the maintenance dose. Increasing of the dose is necessary and you need to reduce the dose to suspend the use. Reach the maintenance dose of 900 mg, so we need to increase the dose day by day like this. If necessary, it can be increased to 1800 milligrams a day within a week. And the limitation is 3600 milligrams a day. Energetic effect comes with a dose of 1800 to 3600 milligrams a day. So it takes several weeks to reach the proper dose and it is a little bit burdensome for us to prescribe them. So I don't really prescribe it. So when Neurontin is administered, Energetic effect comes at two weeks after the start of administration and it takes for about four months to get the maximum energetic effect. So it takes about two months to achieve the effect that we desire. For this, I recommend that you refer the patient to a specialist. I get this question a lot. Do we need to prescribe Neurontin? Because of this background, I should say no. For paresthesia or pain because of nerve injury, carbamazepine instead of neurontin needs to be used. It also requires maintenance dose, and pregabalin is the same. It is Lyrica. It also requires maintenance dose, and the increase of dose is required to reach that dose. This has been a brief introduction to drugs that can be used in a dental office, not very frequently though. This is my prescription guide. The basic stuff, this is one set, amoxicillin, loxoprofen, and the mosapride. So that's the basic, three times a day after a meal, they need to be taken. 
before extraction or surgery, after simple extraction or simple implant surgery, or after period surgery, or in most other cases. So these are prescribed. Next, this is a derivative of the basic. This is preoperative prescription. For a cardiac patient like this, before surgery or during pre-surgery drug administration, amoxicillin 500 mg, 2 tablets, 1 tablet of loxoprofen and the mosapride would be prescribed and to be taken 1 hour prior to surgery. Mosapride, when taken for a long time, should be replaced by mucosa protective agents like aclatonium, almagate, or PPI. Next, B set. Everything remains the same, except it is changed to almagate, and augmentin is the antibiotics used here. If necessary, steroid can be added. These are for after wisdom tooth extraction or big perio surgery. Next, C set for infection. For the second prescription after IND, when a patient comes with a severe post discharge and there is a fluctuation, antibiotics needs to be changed to cefaclor and because the protective agent cimetidin, armagate or aclatonium can be prescribed, not a problem. So it is changed like this, D set sinus. So this is the set augmentin, loxoprofen, actipid or Sudafed, or Rhinothio, or Cimetidin. Actipid is prescribed for 3 days, and the rest can be prescribed for 4 days, so a patient can be on the drugs for a week. For acute sinusitis, similar drugs can be prescribed. ESET, Penicillin Allergy. If a patient is allergic to penicillin, you can say we can just avoid penicillin. But most of them can be allergic to other drugs, therefore we cannot relax. I use these, roxithromycin. I don't use NSAIDs. Many of the penicillin allergic patients are also allergic to NSAIDs. So I use Tylenol and Mosepride and it is prescribed for twice a day. If a patient is allergic to penicillin or complains too many drugs, I use this. If they ask for digestives, I change it like this. And this is for children. The prescription is only for about two days, and sometimes I don't give prescription at all. This is for your reference. H set for TMJ disorder or TFO, muscle origin TMJ. Epirison, loxoprofen, mosapride can be prescribed for three days. I'm not telling you that you need to use only these drugs. Absolutely not. I prepare the sets, I add or reduce the drugs depending on the situation of a patient. So the drugs that I have talked about, the sets can be adjusted by adding or removing some of the drugs from the set, but this is the framework and this is for consistent prescription. This is my criteria or guide for prescription. Next, I set. This is only for pain control. After the first prescription and the patient comes back with the pain and if we suspect the patient will be painful, I use a tramadol instead of ultra set. Tramadol, I give three tablets of tramadol separately so that they can take one more tablet if they are still in pain. So for pain control, I have a separate set. So this is the framework for prescription. If you have something like this in your system, you can provide a more consistent prescription. It's easier to add or change the prescription. This would be helpful. In this lecture, we have looked at 
the drugs used in a dental office other than antibiotics and NSAIDs. And I also talked about the sets of prescription drugs that I recommend. If you keep using the same drugs continuously, you would feel frustrated someday and we need to change the drugs depending on the symptoms of a patient. Based on what I have described, I hope you would establish your own prescription standard so that you can provide a better outcome to your patients up to now. I have talked about the details of various drugs and how they can be prescribed. In the last lecture, next time, I'm going to talk about the adverse drug reactions. Thank you for your attention.